Hey, I'm Noel with creationeffects.com and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to turn your video footage into an animated pencil sketch in After Effects. I'm using the pencil sketch effect template from creationeffects.com so you'll need the template to do the effect and if you're not familiar with this template it's a, a collection of 11 different customizable pencil drawing effects or presets uh, which you can apply to your video footage so you can get a bunch of different styles like charcoal pencil, colored pencil, line drawings, uh, photorealism, or a loose sketch. And you can choose your paper texture and there's a lot of customization controls with each preset so you can make it look how you want. Or you can just drop in your footage and right away you can export one of the 11 presets. Alright, so let me take you through the template. Uh, I think it's very easy to use. If you downloaded the zip file, unzip it and you'll see a folder with an After Effects project inside. So open that up and you'll see first of all this instructions comp. I'll close that. And before you start make sure your effect controls panel is open. So you can go to the window and check effect controls. And make sure that show animation presets is not checked because we don't want to see those. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is import your footage and drop it in this comp here called Your Footage. So I'll go to Import and choose my file. And then I'll just drag that into the Your Footage comp. And that'll let you preview all of the presets and effects with your footage. Also, if your footage needs it, this would be a good time to add any brightness adjustments to it. Um, a good dynamic range will make the effect work better. So to show you what I mean, I'll add a levels effect to my footage. And if you see any blank area on this histogram, like you can see there's no information here, that means this footage is underexposed. So to correct that, you just bring the slider in to the edge of where the wave begins here. And do the same on the other side if you need to. And uh, if you want to color correct it too, like if you're going to use a colored pencil effect, you can go to each separate color channel and do that same thing, rather than doing it to the combined RGB channel here. And that'll color correct your footage, which probably most footage out there needs. So that's a good tip for you for, the, for future projects. All right, so now we have a nice dynamic range here. The lightest areas are pure white, and the darkest areas are pure black. So our effects will look better now. Next you can open this folder here, Pencil Sketch Presets. And you can see there are 11 folders here and these are the different presets. Uh, if you're not sure what you want, you can open this first comp in the folder called Pencil Sketch Presets Preview. And that'll let you get a quick look at all the presets. You can just turn off this instructions layer and then unhide any of these other layers to see what they look like. One thing you should be aware of is that some of these have this marker note that says set comp resolution to full for an accurate preview. So by default this comp's resolution is set to half because I, I want it to run faster. And uh, actually right now I have it even lower here. I've got it on third resolution. So let me switch it to full and then you can see how it makes a difference in how it looks. It'll run a lot slower in full but you can switch it back afterwards. And you can see there's a dramatic difference in the thickness of the lines. And you can go into these comps and customize the thickness of the lines if you want. But just so you know, uh, that the comp view can be deceptive. So you'll want to switch it to full just to see what it looks like. And then you can switch it back to something lower so you can work faster. Okay, so you've previewed these and you've chosen the one that's closest to what you want. The next step would be to open that preset. Either double click the layer here or find it up here. So this comp can be exported like it is if you want, or if you go to the top of each preset, you'll see this control layer. And select that, and then in your effect controls panel, you'll see a bunch of these slider controls, uh, which you can use to customize the effect. Each preset is built differently, and they all have different controls, so I can't take you through all of them, but I encourage you to explore the presets and play with the controls, because you can really come up with a lot of different looks. Let me show you some other important customizations like changing the paper texture. 
Uh, first, I need to tell you about dynamic textures because dynamic textures make up a significant part of these effects. Um, dynamic textures are these always changing textures uh, made from one or more high resolution photos. And the photos are moved around and flipped around and rotated and blended together so that no two frames ever look alike. So the paper textures and the uh, pencil stroke textures are all dynamic textures and they can be found in every preset. And in the project panel, they exist in this folder here, dynamic textures. Uh, again, you can preview the textures in the preview comp at the top here. And then the animated textures are in this folder. Uh, you've got paper and pencil textures. And then all the source files, like the, the high resolution photos, can be found in this folder here. All dynamic textures can be customized. So why would I want to do that? Well, let's look at our Pencil 1 preset as an example. And let's say we want to change this pencil stroke texture here. Well, there are some options for customizing it on the control layer, but you can do more with it if you open that dynamic texture up. And inside, there's another control layer with slider controls on it. So in here, you can make all kinds of adjustments to the contrast and color and size and so on. If you want a darker or a more dense texture, you can just duplicate a layer. Because these layers are all overlaid on top of each other using blending modes. And uh, if you want to turn this texture into a crosshatch texture, you can switch on random rotation. And if you want to change the size, you can play with the scale here. Um, just note that if you scale it down, let me zoom out a little. Uh, you'll notice that all of these layers are, they're all wiggling around and you're seeing more of the edges of the files now that these images are smaller and we don't want that. So we would need to turn down the position wiggle amount so that the layers don't move around so much. And let's say that we want to change the paper texture now. I'll go back to my preset and you can see the paper texture is here above the other layers and it has a blending mode on it. I can open it up and customize this texture like I just showed you, or I can replace it with an entirely new paper texture. I'll open the paper textures folder and I'll choose crinkled paper. I'll select it and then I'll also select the paper layer down here. And now that they're both selected, I can do a swap. I'll hold down the Alt or Option key and then drag the new paper texture and drop it onto the old paper texture. And that will replace the source of this layer without getting rid of any of the effects or settings that this layer has. And you can swap out the pencil stroke textures in these presets uh, with a different pencil texture in the same way if you want. Like if you wanted some circle scribbles rather than these parallel strokes, for example. So I'm almost done, but there's one more thing that I want to show you, and that's this comp here called Extra Effects. These are copy and paste effects, uh, meaning that you can just copy the layer into your preset comp and uh, put it above all the other layers. And some of these effects already exist in the presets in some form, but I've put them here as well because I think it's just convenient to have them. Just read the description here to see what it does, and then to customize them, just use the slider controls on each layer. I'll go through these because they can be really useful. Uh, the first one is very important. I called it the stop motion effect. And this one's actually inside all of the presets already. Um, if I open a preset, you can see it here at the top, and it affects all the layers underneath it. And what it does is it adds that choppy, shaky look that you saw in the demo video. So it makes it look like someone took a bunch of still photos of a bunch of drawings and then edited them all together. And it's really an essential look in order to make the effect believable. And um, if you select the layer, you can see you have some options in your effect controls panel and you can set the frame rate and uh, how much each frame will shake, zoom, rotate or change exposure uh, on each frame. I'll go back to my extra effects comp and the next effect is smudge shading. Artists sometimes will rub the paper with their hand and it, it sort of blends and smooths out their, their shading. So that's what this is going for. 
Um, I'll bring in one of the presets and put it at the bottom here and you can see what this does. So that's without smudge shading and that's with it. You can turn it up or down and customize it with the controls on this layer. Next is the turbulence effect. If I turn it way up, you can see how it warps the drawing and it will warp it a different amount in a different direction on each frame. And we use that because if you were drawing by hand, your lines wouldn't always be in exactly the right place. So this just messes up your drawing a little bit and makes it look more natural. Um, the stroke warp effect adds some waviness to your drawing that imitates parallel pencil strokes. If I isolate the footage layer here and then add that stroke warp effect, you can kind of see how it warps the image. The outline effect just adds an outline to your drawing. So in case your preset doesn't have an outline, or in case you want your outline to be darker, you can just copy and paste this into your comp and customize it with the controls. And the add color from footage effect is great because you can turn any of the presets into a colored pencil effect. Um, some of the presets actually have a saturation control in them and that lets you add color. But if they don't, you can do it by adding this effect. So there you have it. I'll uh, let you go play with the effects now. Thanks for watching. And remember, there's a bunch more artifacts for your footage available at creationeffects.com. And if you like these kinds of effects, you can like the Creation Effects Facebook page and you'll stay up to date whenever new effects come out.